Good morning, guys, and welcome to today's edition of the London Session Open, the daily market analysis with ATFX. It's 9.30 a.m. in London, and it's February 26, 2019. Let's take a look at the markets. There's a lot of things to discuss. As you know, yesterday, uh, Labour decided to open up for potentially uh, another vote on Brexit, and um, that obviously has influenced the uh, pound to reach uh, levels we haven't seen for a while so we're going to talk about that and of course cover other key markets that people are trading before we start though uh, let's just spend a few seconds on the risk disclaimer I know most of you guys are uh, well experienced we have John Keith Marvin Saheed and RG uh, all of you guys were here last week uh, Monday and I know you guys are experienced, but there might be some people watching this that are not. So let's spend just a few seconds on the risk disclaimer so everybody can get familiar with the risks involved of trading. Okay, that's it. So guys, let's uh, move along here. So you should be able to see my screen. Uh, let me know if you don't. Uh, you're most welcome to just, you know, ask me any questions and just send me a little why if you can see uh, my screen. I do know that I think it was last week we had some issues with the screen and I was just literally, you could just hear my, my audio but not actually seeing what I was seeing. Okay, uh, let's begin with something far less exciting than uh, the uh, Euro uh, GBP USD. So let's begin with the Euro. Now the Euro, there's not too much difference here compared to what we were talked about a few weeks ago when the market was trading at 112.12. The price is trading sideways between 112.12 and 115.16. So we're trading within this range and we need a break here, either to the downside uh, at 112.12, alternatively a break to 115.16. Uh, 16. Now, I prefer the downside because the market is already in a downtrend. We also know that the U.S. has higher interest rates than Europe. But what's more interesting here is that you have pretty much a, a double bottom here to some extent. And we can clearly see this one big level here. And then there's another level here at 1236. So it's very clear that if you take this level out, we're probably going to have a bunch of stop loss orders triggered and we'll probably have a further move to the downside. Now, I'm interpreting this as some sort of a rectangle. The difference between the low and the high is about uh, 200 or 305 pip. So if we have a break here. We could potentially see that and the currency pair could go down to maybe 109 109 now same thing could happen here we could break to the upside however it's less clear here which is the level where people have the stop loss orders there might be a 115 16 there might be even here a little bit higher at 115 67 so it's a little bit uh, tricky here uh, and it would also mean that we would come to an end really of this downtrend that started here on february uh last year of last year so this 12 month downtrend would end so obviously goes upwards and turn bullish but there's probably better things to trade and i'm going to actually share that with you guys today so this is the new zealand dollar versus the usd and here it's much more clear right this is your daily chart in the new zealand dollar versus the usd you have yourself a high here and you have yourself another high here of course, the highs are not at the same levels, so uh, it doesn't have to be uh, an actual breakout uh, here. Uh, sorry, it's it's less sort of fussy. Uh, sorry, it's less fussy. We know exactly which levels are important. Most likely stops are here or they are here. So a break to 69.40 could easily, could easily uh, break this to the upside and we could probably go upwards, okay? So this is much more straightforward, which is much cleaner pattern and something I would focus on instead of necessarily focusing on the euro. Now, this is the GBP versus the USD. You probably saw it on my Twitter, but I did produce uh, this chart. This is a head and shoulders with a head, so left and the right shoulder, and this is your head. Uh, and as I said yesterday, um, I'm sorry, sorry as what happened yesterday is that Labour Party opened up for another Brexit vote. There are some conditions to it, though. I think they want to push through some of their own ideas, and if they get rejected, we could have some sort of a vote on on uh, on Brexit. Um, 
I don't really have a strong opinion if that's going to happen or not, but I think the way things are looking right now, we're probably going to have an extension, uh, and we're not going to have a Brexit on, and, uh, by the end of March. Uh, unless, of course, Theresa May really wants to go strong before that. But I think it's more of a neg- negotiation tactics. And the market here is is sort of calling her bluff. They think she's bluffing. That's why they're lifting the market upwards. If they really thought we're going to have a hard Brexit, the GBPUSD wouldn't be trading at 131.54. It will probably be trading closer to 124.50. Uh, and you know what? The markets are a bit weird, right? Right now, everything is sort of exciting. People are buying the pound. But it could be, you know, two weeks ahead of uh, Brexit that everybody changes their mind, the book profits, and we have a massive reversal. So it's still going to be very, very, very tricky here. Uh, And I'm personally not going to get involved here. But you do have a head and shoulders with the left and the right shoulder in your head. And a break to 132.64 could potentially lift the price towards 139.73. My philosophy around these things is that if you can get in a market, if you can get in a break, and then you can just reduce your stop loss, and that's fine. Uh, so if the market breaks here, it then goes up to 134, and then goes down a bit, and then goes up to maybe 34, 50, 35, and you can reduce your stop loss, then it doesn't really matter too much uh, what happens afterwards, because in worst case, you get out of break even. As long, of course, that we don't have news coming out over the weekend which again sort of opens up the problems. But this is your pattern, uh, and as always, I leave it up to you guys to decide what you want to do with this pattern. As for the dollar versus the Japanese yen, you might remember last week when we were talking, the market declined to about 110.41. I said as long as about 110.20, we're probably going to trade upwards, which we did. We reached as high as 111.23. That probably would have been a good opportunity to book a bit of profits, and I think we could potentially go towards 111.73, maybe 112 eventually, but it's it's a market that really struggles. There's not too much activity here, so we need to be careful and mindful here. As with uh, price of gold, um, remember this, guys. We were looking at this. The idea was to, for the market to bottom out down here, uh, which it uh, did, rally strongly, and it's now pulling back lower again. This is 1321. As long as the market trades above this level, sorry, as long as trade above this level here, I think at about 1321 and a half or so, people will be quite keen on buying and then lifting price to the upside. Okay. Um, I definitely misjudged this market. It's definitely been, I mean, as for now, it's one of the few things that are actually trending. Obviously, stock markets are also trending. Um, but it definitely be trending. So here, uh, for now, let's just continue to be bullish until the trend turns bearish. All right, this is crude oil. Uh, so what happened yesterday then? We had some massive moves. Myself, I was long gas oil and I was long copper. I had some healthy profits. Uh, I did get out, but I was forced out. So what happened yesterday is, is that Donald Trump tweeted uh, that crude oil prices are just a bit too high. He's asking OPEC to uh, take it easy uh, and sort of keep prices contained. And he's also talking about that the economy can't deal with too high crude oil prices. I do suggest you follow him on Twitter. Uh, I do that because he influences the market. And uh, many times is good entertainment as well. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, he, he just forced price lower. And it sort of wrecked the head and shoulders pattern that we were working with. So here uh, you can see the market went all the way down and slid below 55.29. So we're back within the pattern. So this head and shoulders pattern here is void. I would not engage here. I think the market can go a little bit lower, maybe 53. And then maybe from here, try to build some sort of a bullish case. Um, If you do want to trade some sort of crude, then you're probably better off looking at Brent crude oil. The pattern Brent crude oil is much better than the pattern here. And Brent crude oil, you're looking to, you're having a hard retest of its head and shoulders. And this is the S&P 500. As you might remember, the last sort of solid setup I shared with you guys that worked out good was down here. And by the end of January, we said the market is probably going to trade upwards. And then, if I remember correctly, we did talk about buying here. 
the market also moved upwards. But then after that, this one I missed, then this one I also missed. Now, you need to be a bit careful. Uh, if you look here, uh, you can see that yesterday we had a reversal candle on the daily. And that reversal candle happened pretty much at 20, uh, 2,820, so up at the highs. Uh, and a break to 2,764 would, to me, sort of conclude that we have a reversal here. So take out this level, we're going to probably go down. And this, again, is a sign of a reversal, that candle. If you look at the one-hour chart, you can see here that the trend is bullish above 20, 2764 Point eight. So for now, I remain bullish here, and I still think we can go upwards. But uh, again, you need to be careful with sort of what the, the charts are telling you. And this is the German DAX. Um, it's still in process uh, of sort of trying to fulfill this head and shoulders. You got yourself a right shoulder here, and then you have yourself uh, a left shoulder here, and then you have a head down here. This is the head, and this was the break here on February 20th. So if you did buy on that breakout, the stop loss initially would have gone down here and should now be at 11,359. And I told uh, I told people this morning that the market probably going to bottom out here if it did. So far, so good, all right. And any sort of retests of uh, something like uh, 11,432, it's probably gonna be met by buyers and let it go up. And then when it's gone up, I think the stop loss can be reduced to like 11,386 and then that's it, okay? So I think that would be a good little setup. Uh, let's take a look at the cryptos. So I was actually getting really excited about uh, Bitcoin and I was actually long Bitcoin cash and I was up a decent amount. But when the market, I think on Sunday, the market literally just collapsed and I got stopped out at uh, for a slight loss. Now, this is Bitcoin and this is your daily chart and we're stuck in a massive triangle. We break, we breached this level and technically this triangle is still in effect. We're still outside of the pattern, but it's a bit of a fragile market without a doubt. And I wouldn't, I would, I'm not going to get involved myself again here. Um, I think, however, if we trade above this here, 42.11, I think that could easily sort of lift things to the upside. The interpretation is going to be a bit different. In fact, we can probably treat it at that point. You can treat it as an ascending triangle. Because you have yourself these two highs, so at least you one, two, three highs in the same vicinity, and then you have that racing uptrend, uh, up, upward pointing uptrend, and you could potentially interpret this in the following way at that point. So literally like a thousand dollar move up to the high on a break. Myself, I was trading Bitcoin Cash, and I was trading this head and shoulders here. I don't know if you can see it, but this is your four hour, and you got yourself a head, left and right shoulder. And I literally, I bought down 34, so it's here. Here-ish, I bought. Was in a nice little profit, and then the market tumbled and got me out. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, do let me know. So for everyone that is new to this, so this is our daily market update with ATFX. ATFX, as you know, is you know based in London. I'm working from the London offices. We're about 20 people in this office, uh, and then we have a big, big office in Hong Kong, uh, where you can find marketing and uh, groups like that. Uh, new player here in London, and I strongly suggest you check out their spreads. Uh, they're actually better than many other companies. Uh, if you trade, for example, like something like the euro dollar, and you can easily, um, easily sort of start to trade with spreads from about 0.6, because uh, they're like ATG active trader um, type of accounts. Uh, the thresholds are lower. 
uh, many other companies, you need to you know deposit twenty five grand or something like that to have uh, like uh, access to better spreads and extra things. Uh, and you actually have this at a lower level here. So let me see here. It should be trading, and then uh, retail edge account. So the minimum for that is about five thousand dollars, but you can actually put in a little bit less. Uh, talk with the guys here, which means that for your euro dollar, you're paying 0 0.6, which is not that bad. It's actually much better than many other places. And then you have 0 0.7 on the dollar yen, 0 0.6 on GBP, and 0 0.7 on dollar Swissy. And so you can clearly see here how things are quickly become much, much more cheaper. I'll send you the link so you can explore this on your own. It's going to be on the chat box. And a good thing as well is that they offer quite a lot of markets. So uh, some some brokers, they still sort of insist on not offering too many cryptos or they don't offer shares. Uh, so you have all of this here as well. And we're going to do more things for them. We kind of start to do some um, coaching. So for anybody that opens up an Edge account, uh, gets coaching, uh, it's going to be about – two 30-minute sessions, and then obviously depending on um, the sort of tier, because there's another tier that is higher, you get like uh, a session or so per month and more access to me on the research side. Uh, so there's some perks you get as well working with ATFX. Okay, uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions, so we're going to wrap things up. Uh, about YouTube, some of you guys asked about it. I'm going to see if I can upload things to YouTube. Uh, I just, um, you know, I've been traveling. I was in Dubai for a bit of business and a bit of pleasure. Um, so I haven't actually figured that out yet. But uh, later this today or maybe uh, tomorrow, hopefully I have the YouTube account up and running. Uh, so if you do miss out, if you just arrived, you can still watch the recording on YouTube, uh, most likely on ATFX's uh, YouTube account. Uh, I'll let you know more about that. If you have any questions about what you just talked about, the spreads, if you want to sort of improve your bottom line um, and trade with slightly better spreads and other services here at ATFX, you have my email. It's alejandro.sambrano at ATFX.com. As well, just follow me on Twitter for any market updates. Uh, I'm going to start to do more articles and more content here via ATFX. It's going to be for free. Uh, so just stay tuned on, on Twitter. Uh, more content is going to be available over the next few weeks. Have a great day, guys, and have uh, a good trading day. Thank you.